Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca Hauer, a middle school art teacher in Central Virginia, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you along for a day in the life of a art teacher. Make sure you like this video and are subscribed to The Art of Ed for more day in the life videos just like these. Let's get started. I try to make my routine as easy as possible. I have my lunch already made. I have refilled my giant water bottle. My coffee is ready to go. And the only thing I have to do is get dressed and get ready. The only other thing that I do have to do in the morning is let my dog out and feed my cat. The last thing that I do before I head out the door is I sit a little bit on the couch with either my dog or just me and myself and my coffee and I think about my day and I try to get myself ready and in the right mindset before I start heading out the door because I know that as soon as I head out, it's going to be going, going, going really quick. And I wanna kind of have that time of quiet and reflection before I get going. I know some people don't have that ability, but if I do, if I have an extra couple minutes, I'm fine to sit and sit. So let's talk a little bit about how my day is set up. We are on a four block schedule. So I teach three classes and the first block is going to be my prep period. So that's when I come in and I do a little bit of work on my computer. I answer any emails that I have to see. And then I make sure that everything is prepped for the day. Since I won't get a break until halfway through the day at lunch, I wanna make sure everything is going to run smoothly and I have all of my materials ready to go for all of my classes. Classes that I currently teach comprise of sixth graders through eighth graders. I have intro to art, intermediate art, and advanced art. These are mixed grade levels, except for advanced art. Advanced art is primarily eighth graders. My intro to art class just finished up a sculpture project with plaster. Our intermediate art class is working on graffiti projects and our advanced art is starting clay today. So it is going to be a busy day and we're gonna have to prep for a lot of different things. So I'm gonna start out my day with prepping all of my clay and making sure that the toolboxes are all ready to go for my students when they come to work on their clay projects. I have advanced my second block of classes so I wanna make sure I get their supplies ready to go first. All right, so I wanna give you a little tour inside my room because it is pretty unique. Um, kind of like every art teacher's experience, they're gonna be a little bit different, but I really like the setup of my room and I think over the past couple of years, I've gotten it to a system where I really like how things run in it. So when you enter my classroom, you can see that there are six really large tables. I love this because all of my students can sit at them and kind of stand if they want to. These tables are left over from the time that this room used to be used as a science lab. So this used to be the only science lab in the school and it has two sinks on this side and then there are two sinks way in the back as well. So this room has turned really nicely into an art room. So you can see under the tables, there are little cubbies. There's eight of them under each side. So each table has 16 cubbies underneath that go really far back into the table. I love having this floor clicker so that I can turn on my fan or my light. This bulletin board has all different careers that have to do with art. And then this bulletin board has all of the studio habits of mind that we talk about whenever we're going through a project. As we come back here, things get a little bit disorganized, but the system works really well. I've laminated some really giant pieces of paper that work well as placemats when we're doing painting projects or working with permanent marker. And then I have some smaller pieces of paper that I've laminated that work really well as placemats for smaller projects that we don't want to have bleed onto the table. Over here, I have jerry-rigged a hanging station for all of my aprons that have been donated by both the kitchen staff and other local restaurants as well. Back here in the dark depths, there is a office. This office, I rarely use but I try to keep it somewhat organized. Any students projects that are very large or don't fit in their cubbies, I can store back here very easily. Extra cardboard, extra paint, and then anything else that I need to store back here that is away from 
prying hands or eyes works really well. These flat files, I put all of my example art projects in. So all of the example projects that I've done over the years are organized by materials and then I can get them when I need them. This side of the art room is the side that we use the most. It's easiest to get to for all of the students. I have all of the cabinets labeled with what is inside for the most part. Materials that we use the most of are going to be actually out on the counter. So all of these are my colored pencils labeled with colors. This is our marker box, trays for paint. At each of our sinks, there is a little basket that has all of the cleanup supplies that they need like paper towels, a scrubber and sponges. And then there is soap as well. And then our district has provided us with these big bucket of wipes that is really, really helpful because it helps clean up the classroom a lot easier. I have scrap paper and practice paper that's available as soon as you walk in the door. And then right by the door, I have my art passes as well as the sign that says, if someone is out at the bathroom, they flip it open so that it says, wait. And then when they come back, they flip it so that it's open. In the very back corner, we have our kiln, we have our large paper cutter, and we have our light table. This is also the area that I keep most of my art show work in this basket right here because then I can trim off any of the extra edges here with my paper cutter and then I can mount it onto black construction paper, which makes it just a really easy process. Then I can take their artwork over to that back blue cabinet where I store it until the art show. This is my small white board that I use generally to put different schedules on in case we have some. And then I have just put up my poster from The Art of Ed going through all different stages of clay because a lot of my students have not used clay before. So if you're looking for this resource, you can find it on theartofed.com. And I have a wonderful poster printer at my school that I've used to print out and then laminate. So I can keep this for a really long time. My desk is over here. I generally don't sit in it very often and I tend to keep just the necessities and then there's always gonna be a little bit of disorganization over here. This little rolling cart with storage came from another science lab. And this is where I do all of my demonstrations with the smart board and with my document camera. Some other things that I wanna to touch on that we work on in our class is visual journals. So instead of just having a weekly sketchbook assignment, the visual journal is a little bit more of a free option and it's based off of one word or one prompt per week. And this week their word is gigantic. Other weeks it has been the word magic, doorway, large, small, um, green, um, growing. Some different words are always the prompts that the students have and then they can go off of that. The only requirements that I have for the visual journal is that they have to use up most of the page, they have to use two different supplies, they have to have words, and they have to put effort into their drawing of whatever they choose to do. So it gives them a little bit more open-ended so that they can do more of their own choice. And then it also helps for students that are early finishers. You can have something for the kiddos to work on while you're helping other ones finish their project. The last thing about my room that I absolutely love is this teacher to-do list. So it started out as just a way for students to remind me to do things. And instead it turned out to be a little post-it wall of compliments and encouraging notes from my students. So we are here at my back sink because I wanna make sure if I make a mess, it's farther away from the students, but I need to fill all of those little cups with our slip that I made yesterday. So I'll need to process it a little bit more, but then I'm gonna fill up those cups with the slip that we made. All right, so I am almost ready to have my advanced class come in for their clay project. So I have everything set up on the table. They're going to be in charge of filling up their own water 
getting an apron and making sure that they get their own slab from the little buckets in the back of my room. It may not be pretty, but my storage for slabs is really simple. I want to make it as simple as possible. So I put plastic bag in between each slab and then I put it in an airtight container. I wouldn't recommend keeping this overnight, but I think it could work pretty well. I have a pre-made template for the mug that we are gonna be creating. So I just need to make sure that our slabs will fit this size template on it and then we're good to go. This is the area that I keep my portable slab roller and it helps a lot when we are working with slabs in the classroom because then I can roll out a bunch of slabs and then the students can cut and slab build their projects. So this is a really handy tool to have especially when you don't have a lot of storage or open counter space in your classroom because this can be stored away in a cabinet or a closet. Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to show you how to make a mug from a slab of clay. Keep it on the table, keep it flat on the table. Keep it flat on the table, thank you. Um, what did I say? It is not, I know, I know we wanna slam it and smack it and we immediately turn into like preschoolers, don't do that. Okay, the clay is like a little baby bird. We do not want to hurt the clay. All right, I get about 25 minutes for lunch, so I try to guard that sacredly. I have my lunch in the refrigerator behind me. I heat it up and then I keep my door locked and closed for that full 25 minutes just so that I can have some time for myself. So a couple tips that I have for teaching with a mask on. One is that I have a very simple lanyard that hooks onto my mask so I don't have to have it around my ear if I need to take it off. And then the other tip is that I have a little bottle of essential oils. Now, if you are not allergic, um, what I do is I put a little drop at the bottom at the bottom corners of my mask. And then for the almost the entire day, it smells really nice and refreshing and um, it keeps me going and it smells really good. All right, so we just made it through the first part of my intro class and they are now headed to lunch and I wanted to just do a quick check-in. So our intermediate students are working with graffiti and the concept of street art. And so they have a couple of different options when it comes to their final project. Um, our shop teacher has cut up a bunch of this old particle wooden board for us to use. So I give them the option of coming up with a design and painting it on this wooden board and adding texture. We talk about symbols, we talk about um, typography. And then the newest project that we have given as a choice is this little tiny miniature fence post. I love how it looks and it's really easy and cheap to get all of the supplies. They start out with just popsicle sticks that they can either cut up or bend or um, make sure that they look a little bit old if they want the fence to look old. We glue popsicle sticks along the back so that they are stabilized. Then we talk about staining, distressing, dry brush, and glazing. Students can bring in moss or other little doodads to put on the bottom and then they design their graffiti letters on the popsicle sticks. When it comes to dismissal, a lot of the times I'll have kids trying to kind of leave my class or they're getting a little rowdy, but I found that if I put up some general trivia questions or some fun music or guessing games on my smart board from YouTube, it keeps them entertained. It helps them kind of wind down for the end of the day. And everyone generally leaves with some good vibes. All right, everybody, it is 3.30. All of the students have left the building and I'm just going to do one more check around my classroom to make sure we didn't miss anything when cleaning up. And then I am headed out. If you haven't done so already, make sure you like this video and are subscribed to The Art of Ed for more day in the life videos like these. Bye.